class. Um, I'm Josh Troy, and my topic is waterboarding. Um, waterboarding is an interrogation technique in which water is forced down the detainee's mouth and nose so as to induce the sensation of drowning. Uh, recordings of the use of waterboarding in the military go back as early as 1976. Uh, should we continue using this interrogation technique? Uh, my main claim is that waterboarding is a form of torture and is far too severe for our military to use. Uh, my first supporting claim is that it is illegal. Uh, waterboarding violates Section 2340A of Title 18 of the United States Code. Um, this clearly states that water or that torture is illegal, any for form of torture. Uh, I'm going to define torture right now. It's uh, the action or practice of inflicting pain on someone as punishment or to force them to say something. Uh, I'm going to say the definition of waterboarding again. An interrogation technique in which water is forced down the detainee's mouth and nose so as to induce the sensation of drowning. So it is, a, it is torture and it's illegal. Um, one might argue that it's not, or some do argue that it's not a form of torture because it's not specifically inflicting pain or suffering, uh, which leads me to my first supporting claim. Um, Waterboarding is extremely, or I mean my second, I'm sorry, waterboarding is extremely painful with both physical and mental long-term effects. Uh, there's been ma many experiments conducted, kind of, uh, I guess, to persuade people that uh, it's torture and should, be a, should not be allowed to be used in the government. And uh, one experiment with a man named Mancow that's his name. Um, yeah, uh, he volunteered to undergo waterboarding and see what it's like. Uh, going into this experiment, he was all for waterboarding. He thought there was nothing um, wrong with it. He, he even commented if uh, some forms of torture, including cutting people's heads off, what's splashing water in your face going to do? Uh, he also said that it would be like uh, swimming in a hot tub. So um, the average person uh, gives up, I guess you'd call it, uh, after about 14 seconds of waterboarding. Uh, after six seconds, he got up and quoted, uh, it was worse than I thought, I don't want to say this, but it's absolutely torture. Um, he, he referred to a childhood memory where uh, he literally drowned and had to be revived by an EMT, and he said that it was, um, he said that it was way, way worse than that, actually. Uh, many doctors who've treated uh, patients, or I guess you'd say the victim of water, waterboarding, have found many mental and physical effects. Uh, some of these effects include damage to the brain, damage to the lungs, and lasting psychological damage. Um, so as you can see, there, there is actually a lot of um, I lost my chain of thought, but basically, yeah. Um, there's, there's many phobias developed as well. Um, some of these include, um, they were afraid, like victims that have, after waterboarding, they're afraid to drink out of a water bottle. Some people are afraid to take showers. And in one specific case, he was actually afraid of rainy days. <laughs> so, um, yeah, that's unusual. Um, my last supporting claim is that is this even effective um, it's been proven so waterboarding it's been proven it's a form of torture which is illegal uh, it causes many mental and physical effects and we don't even know if this is working uh, basically the reason we're not sure if this is effective is because it is an interrogation technique we're trying to get information out of them and the victim when they're being waterboarded, I guess it'd be called, um, when they're actually going under it, they, they're under the impression that they're going to die because it feels like you're drowning and they just, you can die if, it can, if you continue doing that. Um, in any situation where you're about to die and you think your life is at risk, you, you might not, 
you'll commit to anything. And uh, so basically as a result of this, there's a lot of false confessions. Um, so is it, is it effective, basically? Overall, um, waterboarding is an interrogation technique, again, that is very painful, is classified as torture, which is illegal. Um, not to mention, mock execution is also illegal. And it is not even proven to be effective. I, I believe that it's a form of torture and far too severe for our military to use. Thank you, class. All right, uh, the claim is presented. It actually Scott, has two parts to it, and they are both on the brink of being value arguments, so you want to be a little bit careful about that. There's not really a setup of what the structure is going to be. However, in the body of the speech, you do have distinct supporting points that you cite. Uh, the third one, though, is not stated as a claim. It's really just a question, and I think that uh, if you're not going to advance a point of view on it, I'm not sure why you're asking the question. I think the argument should be that it is not effective or that it is ineffective at getting us uh, the results that uh, the, in the interrogators are looking for. On the legality issue, I think that there's been quite a bit of discussion on this. You don't have any data on uh, the court discussions on this or uh, constitutional issues that have talked about this. Uh, you basically rely just on the definition to make sure that it fits into that category. And then the only follow-up that you have is that, you know, the definition of torture is that it's painful, and then the only follow-up that you have is you know, man cows experience uh, having this, and him saying it's painful. And I, you know, I'm not discounting man cows experience. I, man cow is that one of those radio guys? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's what I thought. Okay. So, um, you know, like I said, I'm I'm not sure that this is. Uh, definitive evidence on this particular point. It's evidence on the point. I'm just not sure how convincing it is on that point. And I'm not sure that it meets the uh, technical definitions that the field manual or whatever the organization was that you were talking about defines this as uh, being. Um, the um, the hypotheticals on the third point about whether or not you're going to get data on this uh, it sounds to me like you're talking about using it to get people to confess to something as opposed to getting information from them. And I think you need to have a little bit more explanation here. There's one point on the second point where you're talking about all of these doctors who have analyzed people who've been waterboarded. And I need to know if, uh, you know, who's been doing the waterboarding and where did this, this information come from? Because uh, this seems to me like it's... Uh, 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 the one part of your claim that is best documented, but the sources here are very vague and it sounds uh, conclusionary. So without the source citations on it, I don't think you're getting the credibility that you need to have. I thought you did a good job trying to get credibility by presenting pretty effectively to the audience. You have good contact and uh, you're delivering it in a fairly smooth way, but uh, you need to enhance your ethos a little bit by citation of some authoritative information and get some, you know, let's get a halo effect from from those doctors that have gotten all this result. Who are these people? What are the circumstances? Where was this information published? That's the kind of stuff that we need to have a little bit more of in the speech. All right, thank you.